5 minute habits for healthy living. This week is habit number 4, which is called adapt. How to eat the optimal number of calories. Hello, this is Dr. Brian Morris and welcome to 5-Minute Habits for Healthy Living, where you will learn the tools to practice a healthy lifestyle 5 minutes at a time. Life has become very complicated with a seemingly endless amount of health information at our fingertips. How do you know what to believe and what not to believe? In this podcast, I sort through the maze of information and distill it into easy to digest, time-tested, evidence-based practical strategies for optimal health. I've been practicing internal medicine for 20 years. I went to medical school at Johns Hopkins, I trained at Yale, and I previously held a teaching position at Harvard Medical School. I currently practice medicine and hold a teaching appointment at UCLA Medical School. here in Los Angeles where I teach these tools and these strategies to medical students, house staff, doctors, and of course to my patients. Before we get to this week's habit, I'd like to remind you that the information contained in this podcast and at 5minutemd.com is intended solely for educational purposes and should not be used to diagnose, treat or prevent any health condition or illness. This information may not apply to a specific health situation and is not a substitute for medical care by a qualified, licensed, board-certified healthcare professional. Please consult with your healthcare provider before making any changes to your healthcare regimen. This week's habit is number 4 and it is called adapt. A D A P T, which is the process that I teach my patients that is helpful in terms of figuring out the best way to eat the optimal number of calories each day. Back in habit number 1, we discussed the importance of eating the correct number of calories each day. The number of calories that each of us should consume depends on a lot of factors including our age, activity level, muscle mass, weight, genetics, and many other factors. To figure out how many calories each of us should eat, it's always best to ask your healthcare provider. However, there are ways to get a general estimate on how many calories each of us should consume in order to lose weight or maintain our current weight. To maintain weight in general, we want to consume about the number of calories that we burn each day. If we want to lose weight, we want to eat fewer calories than we burn each day. So first, you want to figure out approximately how many calories you burn each day. The Harvard Health Letter published a formula that is reasonably helpful in estimating how many calories each of us burn each day. The formula is not perfect, but it's reasonably accurate. Here is the formula. You take your weight in pounds and then you multiply it by a factor that depends on how active you are. So for example, if you're fairly sedentary, if you're sitting most of the time, you would use a factor of 12. So you would take your weight and you would multiply your weight by 12. Your weight in pounds by 12. If you exercise Occasionally, maybe once or twice a week or even 3 times a week, you would take your weight and you would multiply it by 13.5. If you're a moderate exerciser, so you're exercising 3 to 5 times per week, you would take your weight in pounds and you would multiply it by 15.5. And finally, if you're exercising most days of the week, about 6 or 7 days a week, you would take your weight and you would multiply it by a factor of 17. So, you would take your weight and you would multiply it by whichever factor applies to your situation, and that would give you the number of calories approximately that you are burning each day. So if a person weighs 200 pounds and he or she is fairly sedentary, the factor would be 12 and you would take the 200 pounds and you would multiply it by 12, which would give you 2400. So that person would be burning about 2400 calories per day. 
However, the reason that this is an approximation and not a perfect number is because there are a lot of other variables that go into this calculation. So for example, if a person has more muscle mass, then they will burn more calories than if they had less muscle mass. In general, men burn more calories than women. And there are lots of other factors. So this will just give you a general approximation. Another way that you can calculate approximately how many calories you're burning each day is to use a website or an app. There are some pretty accurate apps out there such as Fitbit or Lose It or MyFitnessPal or Spark People. And these are apps and websites that have their own formulas that are reasonably accurate also in estimating how many calories somebody is burning each day. So these are the two ways that you can get a reasonable approximation of how many calories you're burning each day. Now, once you know approximately how many calories you're burning each day, then you need to decide if you want to lose weight or maintain your weight. If you want to maintain your weight, then you should consume about the number of calories that you burn each day. If you want to lose weight, then you want to consume fewer calories than you burn each day. How much less? Well, here is an easy way to figure this out. If you consume 100 fewer calories each day than you burn, you will, on average, lose approximately 10 pounds in a year. Now, this assumes that all other factors are held equal, but in general, if you consume 100 fewer calories each day than you burn, you will lose approximately 10 pounds in a year. So what you do is you take the 100 fewer calories, 100, take the zero off the 100, and that gives you 10. So as another example, if you consume 200 fewer calories each day than you burn, and you continue to do this for an entire year, and all other factors are kept equal, you will lose approximately 20 pounds in a year. This sort of calculation can be very helpful, although it's not perfect, but this can give you a general idea of how many calories you should be eating per day based on what your goals are, whether you're trying to maintain your weight or lose weight, and also approximately how many pounds you'd like to lose in the next year. So the next topic i like to discuss, though, is the main topic that will be covered in this episode of the podcast. That is the mnemonic ADAPT, A-D-A-P-T, ADAPT. This is the mnemonic that I use when I teach my patients about how best to monitor calories and use calories to effectively reach your weight goal. Let's go through the mnemonic. Step one is the A in ADAPT. A stands for assess. Assess your daily calories. This means that you use an app or an online tool or even just a piece of paper to keep track of every food or beverage that you consume every day. You don't do this permanently for the rest of your life. You do this for a period of time, sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes even longer, but you do this for a period of time. You monitor how many calories you're consuming every day. We now have some wonderful apps out there and also websites that make this process quite easy. Lose It, MyFitnessPal, Fitbit, Spark People, and there are many, many others out there. These are really helpful apps that make calorie counting so much easier than it used to be. When you use one of these calorie trackers, make sure, though, that you are reasonably accurate with your portion estimates. And also, please be sure to include all the hidden sources of calories. You have to include ketchup and mayonnaise and salad dressings and bread and that glass of wine or those crackers that you may have grabbed as you walked through the kitchen last night. You have to include all every source of calories that you consume on the app or the website or the paper journal that you're keeping. So step one is A for assess your daily calories. Step two is D for downsize. Once you've documented what you're consuming every day, you take a look at it and you try to come up with creative ways that you can downsize the number of calories that you're eating each day. Try to find ways that you could have reduced the number of calories that you have consumed. Could you have reduced your portion sizes? Could you have made a food substitution that might have saved calories, such as having a salad instead of a sandwich, or having unsweetened iced tea instead of juice? Figure out how you might have done things differently to downsize how many calories you consume. 
So what I usually tell my patients to do is go over an entire week and go through each day and figure out how could you have reduced each of those days by 200 calories or 300 calories or whatever your goal is. Step three and step four, I tend to put together. They are automate and plan. So A for automate and P for plan. I put these two steps together often because they really do work well together. You want to automate and plan. Once you've analyzed your calorie consumption and come up with creative ways to downsize, now you want to come up with ways to plan the next week or two weeks or a few months so that now you can reduce the number of calories that you eat into the future. Once you've now seen how you could have done things differently, the key going forward is to plan how you can actually implement this going forward. How can you eat fewer calories with dinner tomorrow? Plan it out. That might mean going shopping and buying some new foods and beverages that you don't currently have at home. It might mean eating at home more often than you eat out at restaurants. What's important here is to plan how you will succeed in reducing your calorie consumption and then automate the process. You want to plan and then you want to automate. And by automate, I mean you want to make it automatic. You want to make it an easy process. For example, you might want to bring a salad to work so you don't have to think about what you're going to have for lunch. You may want to prepare food over the weekend so that you have dinners prepared for the entire week. You want to plan and then you want to automate the process of eating the optimal number of calories each day. Plan and automate. And step five, which is the last step in the ADAPT process, is tell. T for tell. Tell at least one person what you're doing. Tell at least one person that you're trying to make some changes in your nutrition and in your habits. Telling someone is a very significant and powerful event. When you verbalize what you're trying to do to someone else, it now enters a new stage in reality. It becomes so much more real to yourself and to other people. And the person that you tell this to can be a friend or it could be a family member. It can be a coworker. It could be someone at church. This can be whomever you feel most comfortable discussing this with, but when people discuss their new habits with others, there's a much greater likelihood for long-term success. So the overall mnemonic is ADAPT, A-D-A-P-T. You want to assess your daily calories. You then want to downsize by looking at how many calories you've eaten and figuring out creative ways to reduce the number of calories to reach your goals. Then you want to automate and plan. So you want to now plan for the future so that now you can reach your calorie goals and you want to automate it so that the process is much, much easier. And finally, you want to tell your plans to somebody else, at least one person. You can tell more than one person, but you want to tell at least one person what you're doing to make this a reality and to increase your chance for long-term success. Following the ADAPT model can be life-altering. It could make our nutritional goals attainable within a reasonable period of time. Let's keep the dialogue going. Let me know what you think of this week's Habit for Healthy Living. Post your comments and your experiences on the 5 Minute MD Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at Brian Morris MD and visit us anytime on our website, 5 MinuteMD.com. Let your friends and your family and your colleagues know about this podcast and make sure that you are subscribed on iTunes. When you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, you will receive new podcast episodes as soon as they are posted. Also, in the next few months, we will be posting bonus podcast episodes at 5MinuteMD.com, including special podcast episodes not available on iTunes. And if you're finding the information on this podcast helpful, We would really appreciate it if you would take a moment and stop by iTunes and leave us a review. Thank you so much for listening and remember to make today count. I will see you at the next five. 